So you want to learn BBCF. Is there an easy character? Is there a hard character? Is there a character just right for me with a specific play style? Who do I learn the game with? All these good questions I'll be answering today. Sit tight, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be learning about BBCF's characters. Class is now in session. Long time no see, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Professor Coco's classroom. <laughs> yes, I'm sticking with the persona. I'm sticking with the whole attire. I think it's hilarious. And, you know, who doesn't want to be a fictional professor? Anyways, today we're going to be going over the entire roster of Blaze Blue Central Fiction and going over each individual character and seeing if they're easy, they're hard, they're good to pick up. If you're a beginner, they're easy to pick up. Or if they're hard to pick up, they're if they are more combo eccentric, if they're more setup eccentric, if they're more technical, if they're more execution heavy, so on and so forth. We're going to be going through the entire roster, and I already took the time and liberty to actually categorize characters in their own categories. The easiest, the mids, and the, and the hardest ones, if I should say. Uh, I categorize, since there's a lot of characters in between, like the easy to hard category, I kind of subcategorized the characters in between so there's there's the categories i'm going to be going over okay the easiest characters to pick up the game with the i, I want to say mid easiest so they're like not the easiest but they're just a step above uh there is the mid uh the, the mid characters the mid hard characters and then the hardest characters to pick up in the game i'm going to be going through every individual one explaining a little bit about them and if you and if you match up well with them if you want to play that character go for it man so we're gonna be starting off right here with the entire roster starting off with the main protagonist of the game for the first character that i think is the easiest in the game ragna ragna is a character that you can definitely pick up the game and learn the game through the character this character really has everything you need to be able to have a strong fundamentals game he's got damage he's got mix up or somewhat of mix up uh he's got combos he's got all sorts of everything you need uh, in a character to be able to succeed in this game now in terms of how good he is he is around the mid tier uh, he's not the strongest because in this game unfortunately there's a lot of really strong characters that have a some really strong gameplay like game styles for example take a character like izanami izanami is incredibly strong because of a few specific things specific to that character Ragnar doesn't have anything like that. Ragnar's kind of honest, and but nonetheless, he's very simple to play, very strong, and very fun. The next character that I'd recommend if you want to pick up the game is, of course, Jin. Jin is like the, the Ken, so there's like there's Ryu and there's Ken. They're the Shotos of the game, or the main two characters that you are pretty simple to pick up. And Jin is definitely the other character in this scenario. He has ice powers, he's very strong in terms of neutral, his JC, his 5C, his J2C are all incredibly strong, not to mention Snowflake is ridiculous. His combos are not the easiest, but he's got different routes that can very much be easy to do for any beginner player. He's very strong. You can definitely learn the game with this character. He's very fundamentals based. We like in the community, we like to call him the best honest character. Oh, not necessarily honest, but he's definitely one of the best characters in the game simply because his fundamentals and all of his tools and his tool set are all incredibly strong without having some sort of a very cheap gimmicky mechanic. Well, he's got Snowflake, but nonetheless, you know what I mean. Uh, he's very, very strong in that regard. The next character I want to go over is definitely a character that a lot of people agree that's definitely one of the easiest characters in the game, and that's Mai. Mai is a character made for players that are newer to the game, mostly because her combo routes and her combo starters and just how she functions definitely resembles that of BB Tag. She's got strings instead of like regular normals. And she reminds me a lot of a Soul Calibur character or a Tekken character where you can press different combinations of buttons to create your own string. She's got unique strings. You can press like AC, like AC and you whiff it and then a big long normal comes out and that normal doesn't come out unless you actually activate that string. Uh, but nonetheless, she's got very simple combos, very simple game plan. Her neutral is also very, very extremely like beginner friendly. And her projectiles are very good as well. They track, they become unblockable if you hold them down long enough. Mai is definitely a character that you want to pick up if you want to learn this game. She's extremely fun, by the way. She's one of my favorite characters to play in this game. Not only is she easy, but she is very, very fun. 
So this is definitely a character for you. If you like waifus, <laughs> you like spears, and you like very fun characters. Alongside her, I'd probably have to say Hibiki is another character that is incredibly very fun and also very simple to pick up in this game. He's very straightforward when it comes to his combos. He actually got better in the recent patch that came out for BBCF that came out like about two years, not necessarily recent, but the, the most recent one to know that, that we know of. And uh, the most recent one gave him a lot of cool tool sets. Uh, he's got some pretty cool things such as very simple strings into specific special moves that you can continue the combo off of. Very normal, very simplistic combo enders as well. He's got a reversal. He's got uh, different gimmicks to be able to open up the opponents like with his clones and such. And he's got a very cool like intuitive arsenal that you can freestyle a lot of his combos and you can just make things up on the fly. His confirms are very fun to do and they're pretty simple to do as well just because his tool set is so straightforward. So Hibiki is definitely a character if you like that type of archetype of character, I guess. I don't know what his archetype really is. Or if you like Attack on Titan, how about that? If you like Attack on Titan, play Mr. Levi here and uh, you'll be able to have a good time. And not to mention that this character also has one of the best overdrives in the game. Like he like freaking poopsie did poopsie doopsies damage whenever he gets a good combo starter and goes into overdrive especially if he has low health so he has a lot of it oh boy my god he is definitely one of the cooler characters in the beginner roster next up is celica now celica used to be a little bit more simpler in cpex but they gave her a couple more things they actually made her healing mechanic better than what it was in cpex and before the patch came out the the 2.0 patch came out for this game she was very 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 strong her healing mechanic was incredibly good uh, but she's very straightforward she's of the, all the puppet characters there's three of them Celica is definitely the most simpler one when you take a look at Celica's arsenal it's a little bit on the more weirder side but once you push through that mold and you actually get to know her normals know her movement know her combos and know her her weaknesses and such she can be a very cool character to play that feels really good in the hands of an expert or just in the hands of somebody that wants wants to play her so this is a pretty simple character to pick up whenever picking up bbcf the last character on this beginner roster is going to be s now s is one of those characters that is incredibly incredibly good at what she does she is very good with her fundamentals, really good with her neutral as well, which basically means that she can get the hit pretty pretty well, pretty easily, uh, because she's got some really far-reaching normals. She's got a projectile. She's got different means to open up the character as well. She's a very good example of e easy to pick up, hard to master, because she also has some of those technical combos that you're going to need to spend some time with in the lab. So she's a very strong character in the long run. If you want to dedicate your time right now, you can definitely pick her up right now. And then the more you play and the more you figure out your character or figure out S, you can definitely make some magic happen and get some really cool looking combos. She's a very strong character to start off the game with, for sure. And this is the section that I want to kind of go into where I start to break down the categories. This is the mid-tier section of the you know, execution or like how easy they are to pick up or the, how hard they are to pick up. This is the mid easy. So this is the lower echelon of mid, you know, type characters that are easy to pick up. The first one I got to say it's Tsubaki. Tsubaki is pretty straightforward when it comes to her game plan. And of course, she does have some resource management. And when it comes to resource management, this character is definitely a little bit more harder to learn or to pick up simply because of that, that mechanic, the whole resource she needs her own special type of meter to be able to execute her stronger move. And without those stronger moves, she's nowhere near as good as she is without those. So for the most part, Tsubaki is actually pretty, pretty strong, uh, a pretty strong pick if you ever want to learn the game and uh, need to think of some resources or take your time when it comes to specific pressure. When it's time to back off to recharge, then it's time to back off and recharge. She also has some really cool tools, unique tools that only she has, like bananas. Bananas are always really cool. She's got her EX hammer. The hammer is really strong as well. That haunted me for the longest time in uh, pre-patch or BBCF 1.0. Uh, it was really, really strong. It's still really strong, but pre-patch was ridiculous. But uh, definitely a character that I can see a lot of people picking up if you want to start learning the game. And if you really like those justice type characters, then this is definitely for you. Next up is Lambda 11. Now, out of all the Murakamos, I think Lambda is definitely the easiest one. And let me explain why. 
She is one of the most straightforward uh, Murakumos just because she is more of a physical type. Not as not as physical as uh, Mew 12, but she's not as, as zone heavy as Mew 13. She's kind of in between. She has the daggers, but she also has some really cool rushdown tools that are pretty straightforward when it comes to her combos, when it comes to her gameplay, and when it comes to her mix-ups. She's got a very straightforward, hey, this is a low or this is a high, whichever one you want to do. And also, she also has the, the capabilities of zoning, of course, but not for too long because that's not her forte. That she's a mid-zoning character, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, she gets a lot of her strengths from her crazy mix-up and her crazy setups with the sickle and with the with the spikes, of course. And she just wants to get you into the corner and rush you down and try and deplete your health as fast as possible. So she's really strong in that regard. But in terms of combos, in terms of game plan, they're pretty straightforward. Now, the next character I want to talk about is Bullets. And Bullets is very straightforward when it comes to her gameplay. She might not be the greatest just because her matchups and just her archetype in general doesn't really mesh well with specific against other characters. So she gets beaten out pretty well. So you might struggle in that regard. But in terms of picking up this character, she's very straightforward. You just want to get in, level up your heat level, and try and do as much damage as possible. She's just a damage machine. Out of all characters in this game, I think this character has the most touch of death combos in the game, which are not easy, by the way, but she has them. So this character does a ton of damage. She just wants to get in, rush you down, try and grab you as well, because she does have some new some grabs in BBCF in general, and also just do as many combos, cool combos as possible to get her act or her heat level up. So this character is definitely for you if you want to do a ton of damage, and if you, of course, like hot pants, I guess. Next up, speaking of damage, is the next character that does a ton of damage is Suzano. Now, Suzano, I put in this category just because he's got a lot of really strong moves that you can definitely harass people with, aka 6B. Now, of course, against higher echelon character uh, or players, they're able to figure out what to do after the first couple of 6Bs. However, this character not only does a ton of damage, but he does have very, very strong tools. It, like, like I said, 6B, 2C is really good too. And once he gets his seals, now the reason why I put him here and not one of, one of the easier archetypes, or I could put him a little bit higher, but I feel like this is a good place for him, is because of his seals. And his seals are a huge gameplay aspect to this character. And that requires a little bit of resource management. Seeing which seals you want to get, so you have to do specific combos. So it can, your, 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 your seal select icon actually gets on the seal that you want to unlock. So, but once you have those seals, this character becomes an absolute monster, especially when he unlocks his Sonic Ball or his uh, reversal, or maybe even his uh, his, uh, his sword. That's what it is, his sword. His sword is really, really good as well. Uh, not to mention 6A can be kind of a, a distraction. <laughs> if I, It's not that great, but it's always great to just throw it out sometimes when they're full screen. Uh, one of the drawbacks for this character is definitely his movement. It can be kind of wonky, and he can be pretty straightforward when it comes to his, his mix-up and his pressure, just because he doesn't have the greatest mix-up. Uh, but he does have ridiculous ridiculous damage he's she he's on the same line as bullet in a way but not nearly as bad matchup wise but this is another character if you want to like dish out damage and just be an edgelord this is a character for you that's very simple to pick up the next character i'm gonna put in is azrael now azrael is a tough cookie to actually crack uh when it comes to azrael he's very straightforward he just wants to get in and unga bunga damage you like for like like crazy and this is another one of those characters that is i think this is the s of this tier just because this character is very straightforward in the beginning he's got very simple tools he's got gustav that can whoops sorry microphone he's got gustav which can close some distance between the both of you but between of course you and the opponents he's got very straightforward combos as well he's got some really really big damaging stuff as well very simple as too so for the most part he got that but he also has a lot of crazy things to master so this is another uh like type of character where very simple to pick up it's a very good long-term commitment where you can pick up this character do the simple stuff do the straightforward things and then when you start to understand the character more that's when you can get into the real dirty stuff with his dashes and with his growler and with his valiant combos and his chaser combos and 
his horn and uh, like all sorts of different combos. This character is absolutely ridiculous. He's a very swag when it comes to those type of combos, but this is just a very manly. I want to do damage. I want to mess you up. I want to just turn my brain off and just start swinging, swinging like crazy and start doing this all over the place. So this character is very strong in that regard. The next one I have to put in Jubei. Now, here's the thing. I was really contemplating whether to put Jubei, and I think this is a good position for him, mostly because the character in itself to pick up is not the hardest. His neutral really isn't terrible, in my opinion, just because he's got the ball and he's got sp other specific tools that he can use to get in. However, when it comes to his bad matchups, he's got a specific gimmick that makes him not the greatest. That's crouching state. So whenever you're in crouching state in this game, you can actually perform combos you're not regularly allowed to do. Now, Jubei is in constant crouching state, which means that you can dish out a ton of damage to Jubei. That's, the, that's basically one of the only drawbacks alongside his defense. His defense is not the greatest. However, when it comes to picking up the character in offense, this character is very, very, very good and very, very fun too. A lot of cool things that you can do with Jubei and very straightforward character as well when it comes to his mix-ups and when it comes to his execution, very straightforward. But where he struggles is of course his defense and so you have to be a very, very good offensive player to be able to play this character. So his defense is lacking and the constant crouching state is also a, a hindrance with the character. However, very straightforward, very fun, very simple. All right, so we start to get into the mid tier of characters that are easy or hard to pick up. So we're gonna be starting off with Bang actually. And Bang is one of those characters that he's very movement heavy. And he's not only is he movement heavy, but he's resource heavy. He's got nails, he's got a st like 12 stock of nails. So you can only use 12 of them and his movement is actually kind of ridiculous but at the same time he's incredibly fun when it comes to his nails his movements and his seals his seals is crazy once you get all four seals that's when you can perform a really cool distortion where you it tracks and it goes behind them and grabs them it's really really cool looking his combos are fun his mix-ups are really really fun as well because he's got bumpers bumpers are really cool pressure is really fun with this character as well because he's got all sorts of crazy normals that he can use for his pressure and i think the character is really really cool next up i gotta put an iron tager in there now iron tager is a grappler character and he's one of the few characters that you can actually magnetize the opponents for them to bring you in so when you bring them in that's like basically con compensating for the fact that iron tager does not have any movement options other than jump and super jump and walking that's it but because of the magnetism you can bring the opponents to you it's a very ballsy mechanic but at the same time very fun out of all the grapplers i think tager is the most unique in my opinion just because he's got that magnetism mechanic to him and also the fact that he's not the hardest character to learn in this game as well they gave him a lot of really cool tools like catapults catapults is definitely a, a move that has blown me up a lot of different times grabs are freaking scary as hell especially when you're magnetized and his combos really aren't very hard at all either uh when it comes to his combos they're pretty straightforward they're not i think his cpex counterpart was a lot easier in my opinion when it comes to combos because he had more liberty of doing a lot more things but in this game they're still as straightforward now he does struggle with when, when it comes to matchups he does struggle when it comes to different movement options as well so you can struggle in the beginning however when it comes to combos when it comes to <laughs> you swagging out and kind of just destroying somebody's life bar in like a second because tager can do that uh, because he's a scary scary grappler uh and also you can armor through a whole ton of different things as well it's just really crazy so when it comes to like scariness factor this character has it for sure once he gets in your head it's hard to get him out next up i gotta put in noelle now noelle is one of those characters where she's not the hardest character to learn however her her different drive buttons and her different combos can be a little weird to learn at first she's one of those she's another one of those characters where you have to push through the wonkiness jankiness mold and then once you start to get the hang of noelle's movements and her buttons and her how her drive system works she can be pretty straightforward and her game plan is very straightforward as well she she lacks in damage and she lacks in like proper mix up because once you get into the higher tier characters or players i mean that's when they start to know like what noelle can do and compared to previous iterations she doesn't have the not not as good of a mix up 
as she did in previous games. And her normals aren't great, her movement got stapled just because her jump cancel normals really aren't as great as they were before. However, she excels a lot in being the slipperiest possible. She's got info moves from her drives that nobody else can really have, like her 4D, her 6D, her 2D, all have different properties when it comes to inv invincibility. Her 4D has body invincibility, her 6D has head and body invincibility for a couple frames, and it can go through projectiles. 2D has low invincibility, so you can get some real crazy mind games going with this character. Uh, but when it comes to the upper echelon of players, like I said, that can be kind of non-existent. Next up is her counterpart. The uh, Intel version of this computer is going to be Mew 12. Now Mew 12 out of all the Murakumos, I think she is definitely the best Murakumo out of all of them. Actually, if you count Izanami as Murakumo, then never mind. But I count New 13, out, uh, Lambda 11, and Mew 12 as the Murakumos. So she is definitely the best Murakumo in that regard. If we're counting Izanami, then she's the best Murakumo. But for the most part, Mew 12 is very, very good. Not only because she has ridiculous normals, crazy damage, really cool setups, very straightforward combos, uh, really, really, really crazy normals. Like, I can't even fathom like how good her normals are, in my opinion. Uh, the only thing that makes this character a little bit more tougher than the others is going to be, of course, her laser. Uh, her laser game plan so her lasers and her steins out there are one thing that you definitely have to know you have to like memorize specific patterns and specific timings when it comes to combos as well and that can be kind of difficult when it comes to learning the character and it's pretty essential to be able to know or have some knowledge of the steins and the lasers when it comes to Mew 12. It's pretty good, pretty good. And then of course her lasers make her kind of more of a difficult character as well. So that's why I'm putting her in here. Not to mention this character has a crazy ridiculous DP by the way, or reversal. Oh my God. Let's just finish off the Murakumo trio here. We got New 13. Now New 13 is one of those characters that is not necessarily the hardest to learn, but when it comes to her combos and her confirms with her daggers, that can be a little bit more stagnant. Now, is she harder than any other characters that I'm going to list from now on? I don't think so, just because she's got a pretty straightforward game plan, which is technically just run away, throw as many daggers as possible, try and confirm as best as possible, and just try and basically melt their health bar uh, as slowly or as efficiently as she can. Uh, she used to be ridiculous back in Chrono Phantasma Extend, but they kind of toned her down a little bit more and they gave her some pretty cool tools like the homing daggers, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool mechanic. Uh, but nonetheless, I still think, I actually think that Lambda is the better, is better than New 13 in this game. That's just me personally. And just because of how Lambda is, is uh, like built in this game uh, compared to New 13. Uh, but Mew 12, I think is the best one out of all of them. Uh, for the most part, yeah, that's new 13. I'll putting her in the mid-tier one. She can be kind of difficult when it comes to her confirms and her combos, but once you get used to it, you're good to go. Next up, I'm putting Makoto Makoto here. Uh, now, Ma Ma Makoto used to be very a lot more simpler than she is right now, but they added a lot more interesting mechanics to when it comes to this character. Like, of course, her ball her ball got very like very different, and they changed some of her punches where they launched in the air compared to Chrono Phantasm Extend. However, in this game, she is not the easiest character to learn simply because she's got some pretty interesting confirms and some pretty interesting combos when it comes to uh, her, her, just her optimal damage. She can do like pretty crazy damage actually, uh, but you have to have the right starter and you have to have the right combo as well. And those combos can be kind of difficult when it comes to this character too. Uh, also like just getting the mix-up game going can be kind of difficult with this character as well because she doesn't really... She used to have really, really good form of, uh, of uh, mix-up back in the day. However, now she relies a lot on meter to be able to get that hit. And her neutral really isn't the greatest. They nerfed her ball as well in this version, CF 2.0. Uh, so that makes it a little bit harder to place neutral because that was a really good neutral tool in CF1. So Makoto, I put her in around this tier. Not the hardest, but definitely not the easiest. Platinum, now I put Platinum here because I don't know anything about this character. I should have consulted more Platinum players, but I'm putting her here because yes, she does have some pretty hard mechanics when it comes to her items. The randomness factor is real with this character and, that, and I can definitely put her a little bit higher. 
but I'm gonna put her here for the time being just because yeah just lack of knowledge and that's really my bad to be honest with you but uh, when it comes to her 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 combos and stuff I did try out a few combos myself in the training or in the trials mode and they didn't seem that hard when it comes down to it but when you get down to like her hard aspect or the, the difficult execution part with her items and just the different adaptations that you have to make with platinum on the fly depending on which item you have that can be pretty tough however when it comes to her main game plan then or main game plan or her main uh base gameplay she's not the hardest at all and I, that's why i put her down here uh maybe i could put her a little bit higher just because of the item uh mechanic alone but for now i'm just gonna leave her here Next up is Terami. Now, Terami used to be one of the easiest characters to learn in Chrono Phantasm Extend, but they added the Snake Bite ability in this game, or uh, Snake Bite, which is, uh, well, he had Snake Bite before, but in this game, you can actually cancel your Snake Bite, which makes it a little bit more technical to be able to get some cooler combos. And Soccer Kick is really cool as well. When you combine all these different things, he come, becomes a little bit more technical. They also gave him an overhead in this game that. Is really really cool i call it the sneeze a chew um but yeah when it comes to his combos when it comes to his stomps his setups his mix-ups and such it can be a little bit more difficult than what he was before uh back in chrono phantasm extend which he was very simple but he was very bad <laughs> he was really really bad in extend so for the most part yeah i'm gonna put terami right here but nonetheless oh like before i ended off with terami he's he's pretty straightforward when it comes to that but he does require a little bit more execution or a little bit more effort to be able to play next up i will put in tau mostly because tau is not not easy at all by the way uh but she is definitely not that hard either when it comes to tau i think just her lack of damage is very much a big thing with this character she has crazy crazy mobility and that's the main thing you have to master when it comes to this character is mobility 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 this is another character that i can put in the upper echelon or the mid hard section of uh, the characters but i'm gonna leave her here just because once you get over that mold or that 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 movement get used to her movement she becomes fairly fairly simple um i tried to learn her and she seemed pretty difficult when it comes to like her confirms and just trying to get damage out of all her confirms that she gets uh, but for the most part when i got over that like that hurdle that was her movement she's actually pretty pretty basic when it comes to that but uh she also has some really really fun aspects to her game plan man and she's she's a she's as cute as a button when it comes to you know her shenanigans all right next up we're going to be moving into the mid hard section which is the characters that are a little bit more harder to play uh because of specific uh like hindrances that they have in their game plan or specific combos that are really hard to do or just execution wise they're just a lot harder than the other characters that i mentioned uh the first one is going to be hakuman now hakuman is out of all these characters, he's very straightforward when it comes to his game plan. He just wants to get in, be as defensive and as patient as possible. Takuma definitely teaches you some patience. He definitely has uh, his counter mechanic. His counter mechanic can be kind of difficult when it comes to uh, knowing when to counter. But at the same time, that can be your best friend too. Because if you're playing against somebody that doesn't know how to counter Hakuman's counters, that can be fun. You can have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to his movement, his movement is not the greatest. He's got crazy good normals, by the way. But he has very simple mix-up. He doesn't really have too much mix-up. Uh, he's slower than the normal, and but he still dishes out a ton of damage. One of those characters. He dishes out a lot of it. He's considered the Thought Slayer for a reason. So, uh, but for the most part, his movements, his combos, his meter management. His meter management is unique to the entire roster. Because instead of actually building meter like yourself by by playing the game he builds meter gradually like a timer just like similar to full gore from killer instinct he has the same exact thing and his meter is very different from the rest of the cast so some moves might take up two meter two stocks a meter some can someone some of them might take like three so on and so forth so the character can be a little bit interesting to pick up at first next up i'm gonna be putting in hazama because hazama is so cool he's super cool he's really good too uh however his movements is definitely the hardest part about this character and how to combo 
fr from his chains or into his chains. His chain mechanic is the most important aspect of this character, AKA his movements. His base movement is really mediocre, just having dashes, no runs, and very slow walk speed. But when you mix in his chains, that's when the character can literally go freaking everywhere. He's like Spider-Man, dude. He's like, I wanna go over there, Psst, I wanna go over there. And he can get some crazy shenanigans going too. And he can frustrate you and he can be very slippery too. Uh, however, when it comes to his confirms, they're so cool. I really like Hazama combos a lot. I love watching good Hazama players just because he's really, really, really cool when it comes to his mix up and stuff. Uh, his pressure can be very, very not, not straightforward. It's actually can be pretty deep because you can go into some, uh, some, you know, like snake stance. You can cancel out of stance. You can go for the, the overhead of the low. Or you can just keep going for more like frame traps to try and catch the opponent uh, cat and pressing a button. So it can be really, really fun to try and figure out what you can do with Hazama to figure out your opponent. He's really cool in that regard. But for the most part, definitely his hardest aspect is his movements. Once you get used to that, the character is super incredibly fun. Next up, I'm going to put Coco in here, mostly because Coco is the character that I'm learning right now. And definitely this is a big hurdle that I had to get over. She has crazy things to actually keep in mind. A lot of resources, a lot of gadgets as well. So when it comes to her gadgets, uh, you have to keep in mind that they are limited and they have cooldown as well. When it comes to, like, for example, her Graviton. Her Graviton is a big, big aspect of her gameplay. She doesn't have the greatest neutral either. She's got a really good 3C, which reaches like a quarter of the screen, which is really good as a combo starter as well to set up her shenanigans. She's a mix-up character with a very patient play, a game style. And then she's got some crazy, like really cool mix-ups too that can lead into a lot of damage. Uh, nonetheless, this character's combos are incredibly fun. That's one of the biggest things I, I love about this character is her combos and her confirms that she gets with her gadgets are super, super cool. But then again, her gadgets, her neutral, and also her, her mix-ups and just controlling the character with her gadgets can be very tough. And that's just one of the things that I was willing to accept when I started picking up this character. But she is incredibly fun. She's so cool to watch as well. And yeah, if you want to pick her up, go right ahead. Next up, I got to do Relius. Mostly because Relius is a puppet character. And just like any other puppet character, you have to control two different characters as well. You have to control Ada and you have to control Relius. But out of all the puppet characters, he's definitely not the hardest. We'll get into that later. Uh, just because the puppet moves with him and she's assigned to a specific button. But at the same time, you still have to control the character and control two different types of characters, which can lead to some pretty interesting labbing sessions uh, for you to not only control the character, but the puppet as well. Uh, cool mix-ups, really cool character. I really, really love watching Relius's work, especially with that new command grab that they gave Ada. Uh, really, really cool stuff, and his combos are just awesome as well. And not to mention, he's got the best dad of the year award, so you can give him props for that. And yeah, I think this character is really, really cool, really badass, but can be kind of difficult when it comes to a lot of his uh, gameplay. Next up is Kagura, and Kagura is one of those characters where he's not necessarily the hardest, but he's a charge character, and charge characters can always spell some trouble when it comes to beginner players. He's so cool though, and he's so slick that you sometimes just wanna just risk the the execution and just play him just because. He's got different stances, he's got different types of combos where it requires you to hold charges to be able to get his reversal or to get his Cosmos or to get his projectile out. When you master charging, this character becomes an absolute blast and a combo beast too, especially when it comes to overdrive. This character is another one that does like a ton of damage especially with the right starter and full overdrive. Oh boy, don't expect to survive if he has full overdrive. Uh, but it can be pretty difficult when it comes to specific matchups uh, for AKA like nine or like other characters that can mess up his charge like Azrael is another one that can go just go back and forth and such. But who knows, I'm not a Kagura player, so what the hell do I know? But for the most part, I just think that charge mechanic alone can be a bit of a turnoff to some people. But once you get over it, this character is badass as hell. Next up is Arachne, and Arachne has got bugs, and he's very obscure, he's very wonky, and he's a booger. You know how hard it is to maneuver a booger? 
Yeah, it's pretty hard. And it, when it comes to this curse mechanic, it's super, super OP, but it can be pretty difficult to be able to master and to be able to find specific routes where you can open your opponent up. It's pretty simple to open up your opponent in curse, but you have to know how to open up your opponents. Once you know, it can be very simple at that point. But when it comes to this character without curse, he's kind of booty. And I wish he didn't have curse because he would be booty. But this character is is cancer on a play. I really don't like this character. Don't play this character. Just don't. You'll be happier. I promise. Next up is Iza Yoi. And Iza Yoi is one of those characters that has two different stances. So she's got her main stance, which she can accumulate stocks. And when you accumulate enough stocks, you can actually switch on the fly between your first stance and your second stance. I can't remember the exact names for them, but when you go into your second stance, AKA your Gundam stance, she can be super crazy agile and all over the place because she's got teleport, she's got projectiles out the wazoo, mix up like crazy, OS is like crazy, damage can be ridiculous as well. And she can put you in a blender that you wish you never got into. But sometimes you just don't have a choice. You're going to get in the blender. Uh, a lot of really great players have made some crazy, crazy good work of her, her strengths, AKA SKD. SKD does wonders with this character. Really, really strong in that regard. And she used to be hella stupid because her Trans Am, which is an install super, used to be a pause buffer. Think of the I burn, you know, it like semblance with Yang, but a million times better and you can do it whenever you want whenever you have 50 meter it was ridiculous so she's a little bit more toned down now but that still doesn't stop her from being one of the best characters in this game and one of the most slippery one of the most annoying and definitely one of the craziest i should say her initial stance really isn't the hardest but her when it comes to her gundam stance because her whole as her whole, whole whole archetype changes when he, she changes stances her run becomes an air dash her teleports just are a million times better the way you open up the opponent can be a little bit more wonky but once you get over that whole mobility aspect and the combo aspect and the fact that you have to switch between stances because everything that you do in gundam stance takes up stocks and that's the whole reason for the base stance the base stance is what you do to be able to gain those stocks and that whole aspect of switching between them back and forth of the stances, that's when you can be run into a little bit of trouble because once you run out of stocks and you're in Gundam stance, holy crap, your whole world will fall. I promise you that. And last but not least, we're gonna put in this, this tier is going to be Lychee. Lychee is very, very, very good in this game. She's got some really cool combos. She's got some really strong confirms as well and some pretty high damaging mix-ups too. When it comes to her 4D, her 6A, or whatever the case may be, she can be a force to be reckoned with when it comes to her pressure too. So, uh, what makes this character hard? This character is definitely really hard just because you have to not only control and see which way your, your pole is going to react, because you can set your pole, or you can throw your pole, you can set your pole, and you can throw your pole. I think, I don't know if I said that already, but for the most part, you can do a lot of things with your pole. And they have two different ways they can react. They can go low, or they can just fly up in the air and have a double hitting uh, feature, or you can go low and have a single hitting feature. And depending on which way you, you put in your pole, you can actually like have different combos. Your combos will react differently. Your confirms will be different. Her confirms are definitely one of the hardest in the game. When it comes to this character, when you're if you're good at reacting and you're good at knowing what to do when your when your pull hits somebody, that's when you can shine with this character. And this character, when it comes to pressure as well, can be freaking ridiculous. You have to set it down. You have to continue on. You have to micro dash. You have to control your pull, and then you have to time your pull from when it goes forward and it comes back. And that's when you can go for some crazy risky 50-50. All that good stuff takes into factor with this character. It's a steep hill to be able to learn this character. However, it is possible. She, this is definitely not the hardest iteration of Lychee. She's definitely a lot easier than what she used to be. Uh, I think she's easier than what she was in CP or CPEX. Uh, just because she's got that some really cool ways to be able to set up her combos. So in that regard, She's not impossible. She's definitely possible. I, I didn't want to say doable because I think that'd be weird, but she's definitely a character that you can pick up at any time.
And another character where it takes a long-term commitment because the more you understand the character, the better you become with the character. Now we get to my top five hardest characters that you can pick up in this game. We're gonna go ahead and start off with the obvious. We're gonna go with Naoto. Naoto, oh man. So in terms of gameplay, he's very straightforward. He's got very simple mix-up. He's got very straightforward game plan. He just wants to go in, do damage as much as possible. However, what makes this character hard is the fact that how he gets it is like so crazy hard on execution that sometimes you just want to... There's two different types of people. There's the people that want to like literally like i want to make Naoto work i want to look cool doing it and there's the people that are like you know what i can play another character that can do exactly what Naoto does but easier so there's those there's two types of people in the world and with the people that do stick to Naoto have to literally practice they live in the training room because his execution can be crazy hard crazy hard to be able to play this character optimally and to be able to get you know the the best out of Naoto you have to go to his hard stuff. And that's like dash cancels, micro micro dashes, one frame links. You got all sorts of different ways to be able to combo with this character. But to, to be able to do that, you have to practice your execution with this character. It's so, so rough. Now, they made it a little bit easier to be able to combo off of specific things in CF 2.0. But that still doesn't change the fact to be able to play this character well. You have to be able to like kill your fingers or kill your hands <laughs> the next character on this list is going to be valkenhein valkenhein is one of those characters that is really 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 strong and he is very very oppressive when it comes to wolf stances and when it comes to resourcing or like trying to manage your wolf meter which is a big aspect to this character because you can't stay in wolf form forever uh, it can be really difficult to not only get confirms with this character while in wolf and switch between the two stance or the two forms It can be very challenging when it comes to this character But he's incredibly fun and so rewarding whenever you get a really nice Confirm and wolf and switch back into butler form and just straight up just confirm the combo and the combo and Begin your next sequence so rewarding and so much fun uh, not only is he a badass, but like damn he is so cool to watch too Like I love watching good Valks just because it's so magical that they can get a hit Continue with the hit and the combo and then all of a sudden magically Another combo has just started. He's just all of a sudden opened you up He's so oppressive and so mix-up heavy because he's like all over the place the mobility and in wolf form is ridiculous and also the different confirms he can do in wolf form is ridiculous and he's just super fun to watch. So Valkenhayn is one of those characters that takes a lot of execution because he has, like I said, he has to switch between forms and he also has to try and confirm end wolf form as well. And it's just really, really difficult sometimes. And you have to spend a lot of time in the lab to be able to get even the basic confirm down in wolf form or in butler form. So, and then of course there's the resource management because you can't stay in wolf form forever. So anyways, yeah, but this is one of the harder characters in this game. Next up we got Rachel. And I, I'm going to put Rachel up here mostly because, oh, by the way, this is one of the best characters in the game by far. She does incredible damage, especially when poison's out. She's got mix-ups off the wazoo. Her neutral is crazy with her labelliums. And her wind factor in this game is really, really, really good. And not to mention that this character, and speaking of wind, actually, that's, that's one of the hardest aspects of this character, is that comboing, confirming, and also playing neutral with this character can be kind of weird, mostly because you have to, you have two different factors you have to take control of. Um, you have to take control of the character, and you actually have to control the wind uh, and see what she can do with the wind. Uh, and of course, you have to manage your wind meter as well. And just the fact that to open up people in this with this character takes a little bit of execution as well. Actually, not a little bit, a lot of bits. And uh, just a lot of different factors to be able to take into consideration when you pick up this character. It can be a bit of a rough start. Uh, she's one of those characters that requires a lot of love and a lot of attention in the, in the lab. And once you get through to, to Rachel and her movement, once you start to get it, that's when the character becomes extremely good but at first it can be kind of wonky just because of how she plays in general she's a very unique character in that regard and yeah she's definitely one of the hardest characters in this game next up is izanami now izanami is a character that you have to 
<laughs> it's she's a very unique character as well she's one of the characters that a lot of people dread because she is so strong so strong and she has a specific gimmick that or actually a couple of gimmicks that make this character just like a dreadful character to play against not only does she have a uh, very strong floating mix-ups that can she can continue combo and, she, and she, she can continue pressure and that can lead into the next sequence she can basically do what everybody in the roster can but way better and can do way more too so and that in that regard i'm talking about ribcage the more part is ribcage ribcage is a mechanic where she can engulf herself in this cage and you cannot hit her out of it the only way you can have her have the ribcage disappear is to burst or to grab her that's it however whenever she activates ribcage it drains her barrier meter which means that she can go into danger state which means that she can take double the damage like raw damage so in that regard you have to be able to successfully re like resourcefully manage your rib cage and your barrier meter her confirms can be interesting because of her float mechanic she doesn't have a double jump she has a jump and then a float and she can stay afloat and you can use grounded normals and you have to keep into consideration where you can cancel floats and you can uncancel floats i'm sorry you can cancel floats you can activate floats you can do all sorts of crazy stuff and her setups with her ball and her and her uh and her, whatever that ring is you have to take into everything into consideration plus the world combos are super badass too uh but they can be pretty hard as well this character can be a a very interesting character pick at first but once you start to get the mechanics of the game and you start to understand what izanami can do that's when you can start doing some really cool stuff with izanami she's definitely one of my favorite characters in this entire game but she's so damn good my god and the number one character you probably you guys probably know who it is already just because we haven't talked about him and that is carl now a lot of people say carl is the hardest character in this game uh mostly because you know he's got like crazy confirms he's got like no, to be able to get some damage you need to work for it and his mix-ups can be kind of uh like very very interesting and his unblockable setup is really hard to do as well but i think just the simple fact that you have to manage like nirvana is this nirvana no no i'm sorry did i mention did i say i think i said like ada is <laughs> no 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 okay okay sorry sorry i i think i mixed up the dolls so relius has nirvana carl has ada i think i was calling nirvana ada so anyways this is ada ada is carl's sister and ada is legit another character like it's not like relius where she sticks to relius at all times you have to literally manage ada at all times like babysit her and whenever she dies it's really hard to be able to recuperate back but when she comes back she can be like the word the, the best character in this team this duo is definitely ada carl is whatever ada is the one that does all the work ada is 100 percent the character you have to worry about just because she can interrupt strings she can continue combos she can do some deadly deadly mix-ups set up unblockables do some crazy damage like all sorts of different things that you can do with this 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 character is ridiculous like carl is super 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 good but with that price of being good the price of being so good is of course the execution the resource management the uh the fact that you have to like take care of a second character essentially and just not have her die because that's a big thing and one of the like the strong players actually know how to deal with carl is basically get rid of the doll and then you can go in there or just start oppressing carl until you know until finally finally he doesn't even get to play so for the most part he's got a lot of really cool tools a lot of crazy mix-ups he's got a lot of crazy neutral because he can roll he can he can have nerve like ada summon a fireball like she can thrust herself towards the opponent she can like grab the opponent she can do all sorts of crazy stuff that can make her super super deadly so but with all that being said it requires a lot of execution a lot of time spent in the lab to be able to get any of that so carl is definitely the hardest character in this game in my opinion ladies and gentlemen that about does it for me thank you all for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed this little rundown of the character roster for this game now of course everything in this video is not factual this is all my opinion of course as well and please if you guys think that some other characters are easier than others or some characters are harder than others 
that might be the case with you but this is like i said this is all opinion and this is all just from my time playing with the game as well so uh for the most part if you guys think differently then you can let me know in the comment section down below to see like which other characters you think are harder which characters you think are easier uh but for the most part hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully this gave you a little bit of a a like vision or like a path for you to pursue a specific character or pursue a specific you know like route or path like i said before to be able to get this game and understand this game a little bit better uh now that i explained uh, all the archetypes for every character uh it's a, it was a long video so i appreciate you guys if you guys have watched it till the end uh that's it i'm gonna be signing out here i did it for undernight now i'm doing it for bbcf and it took me a long long time anyways thank you all for watching i'll see you guys in the next video if you guys want to see more bbcf uh, of course subscribe to the channel like the video if you guys did it lets me know if you guys did like this video so i can continue doing more this has been professor coco of course another session of professor coco's classroom take care everybody we'll see you next time